simple costume inconsistency or glitched animation can really affect the immersion of a scene, and Trekkies probably nitpick their favourite franchise far more than any other fans, so very few mistakes go unnoticed and new ones are being found all the time. Many of the entries in this video have actually been removed from their scenes in the new Blu-ray remastered episodes, but some are still included. And though they don't ever ruin the scenes they appear in, these mistakes can really take the viewer out of it. So let's get ready to do what Trekkies do best, overanalyzing and complaining about tiny details that most people didn't even notice. Now we have already done a video talking about some of the craziest things that accidentally appeared on camera in Star Trek, but there were so many comments on that video that we had tons more to cover. The sleuths over at Ex Asterisk Sciencia have unearthed more over the years. So with thanks to York Hillebrand and the Star Trek community, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, here with 10 more times Star Trek accidentally filmed things you weren't meant to see. Hello, I'm Ensign Tom Larkin. You know, there's nothing me and my brother Eddie don't love more than that feeling of getting up and watching Saturday morning cartoons on Federation Plus with our favourite bowl of cereal. But have you noticed how the food synthesizers just aren't cutting it recently? Well, I've made a bit of a breakthrough. Don't tell Starfleet. Come with me to the lab. I've made a cereal that I'm so confident in I've actually called it the Magic Spoon. Now, here comes the science. There are zero grams of sugar, there's between 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving, there is four to five net grams of carbs per serving, and there's only 140 calories per serving. Not bad, eh? It's keto friendly, it's gluten free, it's grain free, it's soy free, and it's low carbs. This is one heck of a breakthrough. Again, don't tell Starfleet. Yeah. But that's not all. You've actually got a few different flavours as well. There is peanut butter, which is Eddie's favourite. There's cocoa, which is my favourite. There's fruity and there's frosted. They're pretty good. You know, I like these so much that I want you to have them for $5 off your first product. That's right. If you go to magicspoon.com forward slash trekculture, you'll get $5 off your first purchase. And there's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, I'll give you your money back. That's how good it is. Now, while you go and put your order through, I'm going to have a chat with Eddie, who I haven't actually heard from for a while. Computer, place a secure call to the USS Cabot. Number 10. Geordie dropping his phaser. The Next Generation episode Skin of Evil is infamous for killing off one of the main cast members, Tasha Yar, so early in the series. But there's a small production mistake in the episode that usually goes unnoticed. About 25 minutes and 30 seconds into the episode, Riker got pulled into Armas' pit of black sludge, and Geordie was apparently so shocked that he dropped his phaser into the goo running over to try to help him. It's unlikely that this was planned because Geordie's phaser appeared perfectly goo-free after Picard beamed down, plus nobody really acknowledged it. The editors may have decided to keep LeVar Burton's mistake in the scene though, as it actually makes Geordie seem more naturally shocked by his friend being taken. Given what happened to Tasha and Riker, it's not likely that anyone reached their hand in the pit to pull it out, so we're just going to assume that someone handed Geordie a replacement off camera. Number 9. The Stunt Wire in The Final Frontier Near the end of Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Kirk got zapped by the god alien, and for a short moment you can see the stunt wire that was used to yank him backwards, in fact you can even see it pulling on his uniform. The production crew probably didn't worry about the wire because it was fairly well hidden in the shadows, but the light flashing when Kirk was shot lit it up so much more. This is why it's super important for the effects team to test their scene under a variety of lighting conditions before filming to make sure that hidden details like stunt wires stay hidden. The scene would have probably even worked better if Shatner just fell backwards onto some pillows off camera or something, because the wires in the scene completely eradicated any sense of immersion in a moment that was already so out there. Number 8. The Makeup Artist in Data's Dream 
In part one of the Next Generation episode Birthright, Data started having dreams about his creator, Dr. Soon. During his second dream of the episode, after he turned into a bird and flew past Dr. Soon, June Abston Haymore, a makeup artist for the show, appeared briefly sitting in front of a door. She was most likely on break and didn't realise that she was in the shot. She was digitally removed from this scene in the remaster of the episode, but can still be seen, though less noticeably, in the first dream sequence. There have been a number of other instances where members of the production crew have accidentally shown up in scenes, but given that this sequence was all an illusion inside of Data's mind, her appearance is even harder to write off. Either way, the dream sequences in this episode were trippy enough that not many people noticed June sitting there. Number 7. The Misplaced Sandbag At the beginning of the Next Generation episode The Child, there was a scene where Riker got out of the captain's chair and walked towards the view screen before visiting Picard in his ready room. Now, this mistake was removed from the scene in the Next Generation remaster, but in the original edit of the episode, right after Riker stood up, you could see what looked like a small bag the same colour as the floor at the bottom of the frame. It looks like a purse or something, but what you're actually seeing is a sandbag a weighted bag that television crews sometimes use to secure the tripods for their cameras and other equipment in place. It looks like the sandbag was originally put there to record a different shot, but when they finished and moved on to the scene with Riker, they must have forgotten to move it. Number 6. Characters Touching Space most of the windows on starships, space stations and other things in Trek are actually just massive holes in the wall. Using glass or transparent plastic would produce glare from the studio lighting, just like some consoles on the sets do. Usually we can ignore this and assume that Starfleet just keeps really clean windows, but a few times actors have actually accidentally reached through these openings on camera. During a scene in a Kazon shuttle in the Voyager episode's Investigations, Tom Paris grabbed onto the edge of the window opening for support and wrapped his hand around to the exterior. Also in the Next Generation episode Transfigurations, the character John Doe rested his hand where the glass should be in the Enterprise's observation lounge. Maybe it's time for starships in the Trek universe to put up some signs warning you to keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Number 5. Dr. Bashir's Shoe Swap The two-parter Birthright was one of the very few crossover episodes on The Next Generation. In the episode, the Enterprise D docked at Deep Space Nine to assist the station with repairs, giving the two crews some time to chat with each other. In the first part of the episode, Dr. Bashir came aboard the Enterprise and ended up working with Data for a while. Near the end, at about 38 minutes in, the two had a chat about Data's recent dreamlike experiences while walking down the corridor. Now it is easy to miss, but at the beginning of this scene you can see that Bashir is wearing his typical black boots that he always wears with his uniform. But seconds later, when he walks away from Data, you can see him wearing what looks like white tennis shoes. The cast would evidently sometimes wear different shoes when their feet were off camera, either for comfort or to reduce the noise of their steps. Number 4. The Many Scripts in the Background Nobody can blame Star Trek actors for keeping their scripts near them on set. The amount of techno babble and other overly complicated dialogue can make their lines way more difficult to memorise than those of most TV shows. Still, the amount of scripts that you can find scattered in the background throughout Trek is truly incredible, specifically in the next generation. To name a few examples from Next Gen, one can be seen in the episode Suddenly Human on a desk near Worf and Dr. Crusher, another in the episode Cost of Living on a bed, one laying next to a medical table in the episode Ethics, and on a step beside Picard in the episode Violations. This may go unnoticed on most TV shows, but in the Trek universe, paper and books are so uncommon that the scripts really do stand out. The ones mentioned here were the most noticed, but eagle-eyed fans are noticing more all the time. Number 3. Kirk's Wardrobe Malfunction As everyone knows, Kirk has a huge reputation for having his shirt torn off in combat. In fact, it's difficult to find a single episode where he stayed fully clothed the entire time. Still though, one of his wardrobe malfunctions stands out from the rest. During a fight scene between the captain and an alien recreation of the historic human war criminal Philip Green in the original series episode The Savage Curtain, Kirk got forced into a rather compromising position that caused a hole breach in his trousers. The scene is quick and easy to miss, but you can see the butt of his pants rip right after landing on his back during the fight scene at around 28 minutes in. 
The show's crew often tore rips into his uniforms on purpose, but it definitely doesn't look like that's the case here, especially considering it was fixed by the time we saw Mr. Shatner's rear section again. Number 2. The Accidental Star Trek Logo Text Star Trek doesn't like to break the fourth wall often, and when they do, it's usually not intentional. This was for sure the case in the Next Generation episode Identity Crisis, when we saw the Star Trek title logo appear on an engineering console extremely briefly. The logo appeared and disappeared in the blink of an eye in the scene in engineering at around 16 minutes and 30 seconds in, and was removed from the remastered version of the series. The logo was obviously just labelling done by the props and effects team, but this simple scene has so much fan theory potential. Do the characters of Next Gen know they're in a TV show? Is the series all one big made-up propaganda piece for Starfleet and the Federation? Could the Enterprise computer be glitching through into our reality? Probably not, but we're Star Trek fans, and reading too much into tiny details is what we do best. Number 1. L Cars Cursors and Pop-Ups the touchscreen computer interface used aboard Starfleet ships known as LCARS, short for Library Computer Access and Retrieval System, quickly became an iconic part of the show, appearing in the background of just about every episode beyond the original and animated series, though they were rarely actual computers. Because of the high cost and simplicity of computer graphics at the start of the next generation, most of the LCARS interfaces were just decorative artwork lit from the back, but occasionally, when more detail was needed, the prop department would use actual animations on computer monitors. This became more and more common in the later Trek installments. These animations fit in really well most of the time, but every now and then we saw hints that they were running on 20th century computers. In the Voyager episode Good Shepherd, for example, you can make out what looks like a mouse cursor in the corner of an LCARS animation, as well as some sort of pop-up menu on a bio bed. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then be sure to check out that previously mentioned video in case it's in that one. But if not, then do let us know in the comments below. Now, we have just passed 220,000 followers here on YouTube. We reckon we can make that 250 by the winter. So just make sure that you've hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss a Trek Culture video. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.